Thank you, brother. Good evening, friends. You may be seated. It's indeed a great privilege to be here in Saskatoon again tonight. There's lots of water has went down the river since the last time I stood on this platform or one similar to it. About ten years ago, I suppose. And I've always longed for the opportunity to get back again to this a prairie people here in the middle of this wonderful uh, country, nation, Canada. And by the grace of God and by the invitation by Brother Softman, my good friend, and we didn't have very much time to arrange the meeting, we just had to hurry up to get here. And I told him, well, we didn't have time to get around amongst the ministers much and so forth with the different churches, but just to set the meeting and we would come together and have a little fellowship. And by the grace of God, we are here. Last fall, I was visiting Prince Albert, and we had a wonderful time there, fellowship also with the people up there in the good fishing country. Of course, I don't say you haven't got good fishing country here. You may have. And so we had a day of fellowship with the brethren and went out to the lake. And now, tonight, we've come to meet you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I don't come as a, a healer now to heal your sickness. I come as your brother to preach the gospel. And I have a little saying, a little slogan that's kind of internationally known. I come to pray for God's children, the doctor's patients, and my friends. And that's what we're here for tonight. Preach the gospel and pray for God's children, the doctor's patients, and my friends. And I'm sure you are. Now, it's turned cool since we've been here, for one thing, that was a little disappointing to many, but I'm sure you people who can stand it here around below zero can, this is a mild thing, but the Southman told me, I believe it gets way in below zero here on the prairie. And my good brother, Brother Baxter, who was just formerly with me, this is his hometown, and he was telling me about how it used to get so cold here in the wintertime, and I love good cold weather. Now, another thing was the change of time. Uh, Billy called me up a while ago, and he said, Daddy, there's a change of time, an hour's difference, I believe, between the city and the country out here, so it's made quite a little difference. Tomorrow night, I think we should start just about a little later. You think that would be all right, Brother Sopman? And then, to you people who are desiring prayer cards, come and receive your prayer card. What time do you go to start service, Brother Sopman? At 8 o'clock. All right, be here at 7. That's this, um, what would you, be 7, now uh, I've got a quarter of nine now. What, if that's uh, Democrat time, we call it down home. Mm -hmm. That's Saskatoon time. Uh, we call it the home Democrat time because Mr. Roosevelt was the one who did this thing, <laughs> and our country set it up so they could uh, get a or I'll play golf a little longer or something or another. I don't know why they are. Honestly, why they just leave the way God made it. Don't you think that'd be better? Just God made the sun to go over, so just if they settle on something about it anyhow. And so um, we'll start then according to this time here, fast time, I guess we, it's uh, fast time, at uh, 8 o'clock. So at fast time, at daylight saving time, at 7 o'clock, between seven and quarter after or something, come bring your come and get your prayer cards. So it won't interfere with the rest of the meeting. And uh, and we'll see just how things come out where we have afternoon services for those who come from out of town uh, for the rest of the week. Now 
We'll try to let you out as early as possible. Pray for all the sick and ask the sinners to accept Christ. That's the object of being here. And we do not represent any certain church or any certain denomination. We're just your brother. And we work for all the churches of the living God. And I believe that there is a need of healing tonight, more than physical healing. I believe it's a spiritual healing for the sickest body I know of, the body of Jesus Christ. is the sickest body I know of. It's so broke up in so many different denominations and factions. And so we're trying to do our best by the gospel to heal that broken body that all people might come together with one great unity. I don't mean you have to leave your church and all of them make one organization. Stay in your organizations. That doesn't hurt anything. But be brothers while you're in your organization. Uh, I was a Baptist, as you know of, and I'm still a Baptist. I'm a Pentecostal Baptist now since I've received the Holy Spirit. So... Um, down in Little Rock, Arkansas one night, oh, a few years ago, at the Robinson Auditorium, there had been an old brother who had been on crutches for years, and the Lord Jesus healed him. And the next day he just combed the city up with a, a sign on these old crutches, and these old buddies, I don't need them any longer. And so that night he was sitting way up in a balcony, and how was the preaching and he raised up. He was really enthused. He said, just a minute, Brother Brandon. He said, uh, uh, I, when I hear you preaching, I believe you're a Nazarene. That's what he was, a Nazarene. He said, I believe you're a Nazarene. And then said, uh, I see the bigger part of your crowd here is Pentecostal. And now somebody just told me, here she's a Baptist. He said, I don't get that. Oh, I said, that's easy. I'm a Pentecostal Nazarene Baptist. <laughs> well, Pentecostal Nazarene and Baptist. I think that's what we all should be, don't you think? And just have rejoice in the Lord. Now, if the Lord willing, it's just a few days before I take another worldwide mission around the world, leaving on the East Coast and coming back to the West, all the way around the world. This is about five times over since I've seen you. By the grace of God, the good Lord in his mercy has let me going into my second million souls to win to him right in our campaigns. And I'm happy for that. I, I was a boy when I was here the other time. I'm an old man now. So many things have been done. I have seen the blessedness of God how he's done great works in healing the sick and saving the lost and calling back the backsliders, bringing brethren together and taking away their differences. I just love to be in that tight meeting. Don't you now, all of you together, don't you? We just love to be in a good fellowship meeting. Now, I thought tonight, the Lord willing, I would just kind of introduce the meeting to you a little while. And uh, Billy told me that he'd give out a few prayer cards here. And we want to say this, that with the grace of God, we intend to pray for every person that you bring. That's right, every person. I just had a revelation the other day. How many has ever been in my meetings before? Let's see your hand. Well, that's almost a complete hundred percent. Yeah. Friends, it's been in my meeting. I'm happy that you're here again tonight to be with you. The big thing has been in my meetings, the people doesn't get prayed for. I have a very odd, unique ministry the Lord has given me by visions, as you all know. And I'm, it's been hard. I can't, but the other day when Mr. Mercer and Mr. Gold here, my tape boys, we were in Maine, up in Moosehead Lake, Maine. And I went from my room, in, from their room, into my room. And 
I know if you're a Christian, you'd understand what I say. The Lord was in the room. I noticed outside the wind blowing in the big birch and evergreens, and seemed like the wind came into the room or either I went out to the wind. And then all of a sudden, I recognized the presence of God. There he met me and revealed to me and encouraged me and told me that he would give me a way that I could use my ministry in this United States and Canada and through the North America. It's always been so hard. In Africa, just one of the supernatural miracles. Over in India, well, I'm just one time, that's all it needs. And everything there will raise up. I don't care what condition they're in. They'll make an effort and they'll go the next day just believing if they're going to get well anyhow. And you ever hear a more complaint? But in America, we've been taught laying on of hands. Now, I call this America because it is America. It's just North America, the continent. So we, over here, we've been taught laying on of hands and the people just have to be personally contacted or they just don't get it right. So the Lord has given me a, a revelation on what to do. Now, this will be my first time to ever pray for people in that way, beginning tomorrow night. And I'm, I trust that the Lord will bless the efforts that we put forth. Now, get on the phone tomorrow and call somebody and get the sick and the afflicted out, and especially the sinner. Call up all your friends at, at sinner friends and get them out to the meeting. Above everything, we want to see the sinner saved. And now, uh, to you pastors here on the platform, I, Brother Rasmus was here, said, I'd like to introduce you, but I didn't have time to meet them all just now. I will a little later. I'm certainly happy that you're here. The Lord bless you. And now, before we open the word, shall we bow our heads just a moment. Our dear, blessed, heavenly Father, it is indeed with great privileges and joyful hearts that we approach thee this evening. In the name of thy beloved Son, the most gracious one, and asking thee for divine favor for this evening and the following evenings to come in this meeting. We have gathered here for no other purpose but to glorify thee. And we ask humbly, Lord, that you will forgive us of our mistakes and our shortcomings that it, thy great name might be magnified in this lovely city of Saskatoon. We pray for every church and for every member and for the sinner man and woman on the street, for all the roundabout places, not because that we have set this meeting here but because of thy presence, may there come an old-fashioned revival in every church. Grant it, Father, may real Christian love and brotherhood break out among the peoples and all the churches. And may there be a great rejoicing and a refreshing here on the prairie. Grant it, Father. Forgive us of all of our shortcomings, and we pray tonight for our friend Billy Grimm in New York, hammering away with the gospel in that great crusade in New York, making the last drags across the nations before divine judgment strikes, and we pray that you'll help him in a marvelous way. May many souls come to Christ tonight throughout the lands, for we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Now don't forget, it's 7 o'clock, daylight saving time, tomorrow afternoon, come for the prayer cards, and at 8 o'clock, the services will begin. Now just for the way of a little talk, 
and I'll try to be just as briefly as possible, but just a regular little routine talk to get the people acquainted with the ministry, because there was probably one-third of the people that did not raise up their hands, and they've never been in one of the meetings before. So now, just a little routine talk on the gospel and a question to ask. Then tomorrow night, we will change the subject into another line of thought. And I want to read tonight a very familiar text in my, my campaigns, found in St. John, the 11th chapter, 30th verse, or I beg your pardon, the 20th verse. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. And the same there came to Philip, which was of Bethesda of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sirs, we would see Jesus. Now, in the Hebrews, the 13th chapter, in the 8th verse, I want to read for a text. It's very familiar. We all know it by heart. It said, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that's been my theme through the years. I read that same scripture when I was here before. And I hope to read it until death shall take me from the earth. Because I do solemnly believe that with all my heart, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's called in the Bible the Alpha and Omega, he that was, which is, and shall come. That makes him the same yesterday, today, and forever. He that was, he that is, and shall come just the same. He never changes. We change, time change, but God never changes. I was having my dinner today, or I think you call it your lunch. I always miss out if I call that lunch and call supper dinner because I've been used to having breakfast, dinner, and supper. And if I call uh, this lunch, then I feel like I've missed my dinner somewhere, my supper somewhere along the road. So, believe it or not, I was with a Catholic priest having dinner today, and we were talking about the how the times had changed so much in the past few years. Oh, it's remarkable how that same man that God made in Genesis and gave him his five senses and how he lived for most 6,000 years without hardly changing at all, and in the past 50 years has progressed a thousand times to one what he was 50 years before. Just think, it hasn't been too long ago, the only way to send a message was from lip to ear or by a letter, a runner. And now, news scatters around the world in just about two minutes, completely around the world. Oh, how times change! But I am so happy tonight that we're serving an unchangeable God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I could hardly believe that anyone who ever heard that marvelous name of the Lord Jesus ever once breathed the what they longed to see him. That was the desire on these Greeks who came up to the feast to worship. They said to Philip of Bethesda, Sirs, we would see Jesus. They had heard of him. Faith cometh by hearing. Now we preach the gospel for many years. For nearly 2,000 years the gospel has been preached. Faith cometh by hearing, but this question was to those Greeks 
we would see Jesus. Not we would hear his word, but we would see him. And now my thought to you is this. If he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, why can't we see him tonight just as well as we could see him then? If he is the same. Now, you say, oh, well, he's ascended. He, he died and rose again, and he ascended on high. That is true. But when he ascended on high, the Bible said, he led captive, captive, and gave gifts unto man. The Bible also states Jesus' own words in the 14th chapter of St. John, the 7th verse. He that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also. And he said again, a little while and the world sees me no more. That's the word, the, the world, the world order. Yet ye shall see me, for I, and I the personal pronoun, I'll be with you to the end of the world. I, Jesus, will be with you, one place he put it, even in you, unto the end of the world. And, compare these scriptures, the works that I do shall you also, by this ye would see me, and the world would ignore it. Now they, they found fault with him in his ministry here on earth because he didn't affiliate with any of their organizations he stood out when people said evil things against him he never opened his mouth he was a different person and therefore he wouldn't fuss with them or argue with them he never was a graduate of their schools or colleges and he dealt among the common poor people and Luke, it says, the common people heard him gladly. The religious people of that day turned him down. He never was too much of a drawing card to the people. His audiences were rather small, comparison to when the Orthodox Church put on something. They come by the tens of thousands and up to the millions, I suppose. It was a a routine, it was a religious act that they all must be there. But the ones who come to hear Jesus was those who desired to hear him. It wasn't a political thing. It was those who were hungry-hearted and wanted to see God. And that would be the type I think tonight that he was speaking of, yet ye shall see me. There will be a ye class until the end of the world, until Jesus comes. Am I making you deaf by that thing? Certainly has a good voice. I, I, is it too loud? If it is, raise your hand. Just it's a little bit too loud. If the, that's thank you, Leo or Gene. Ye shall see me. That better. All right. Ye shall see me. Now. If Christ has risen from the dead and we are given the invitation and the scripture that he promised that he, we could see him and that we, he would be the same yesterday, today, and forever, then would you desire to see him? Would you to raise your hands? Would every Christian believe that I, I would with my hands up? I would love to see him. Well, now, how can we see him? The way we can see him is by his works. Now, he hasn't come in a corporal body yet among us. He's here in a spiritual body. You believe that? A spiritual body called the Holy Spirit. He's in the form of the Holy Spirit. In the beginning, God was a spirit. And all the fountain of goodness and mercy and power and 
all the good things of love, God was the center of that fountain. And then the Logos that went out of God in the beginning become what we would call a theosophy or a, a supernatural body. God is just not like the air, but he's in a body. Moses seen him pass and said, look like the back part of a man and so forth. And then that same Theosophist was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld him, the only begotten of the Father, Christ. Now he said, I come from God and I go to God. Yet a little while the world sees me no more. Then he said that we would see him. Now, if we were looking for him, what type of person would we look for? Oh, I, I just love to take the word. I believe the word. That's the truth always. God's word is the truth. I believe that every promise of God is absolutely the truth. And at the right mental attitude, attitude pardon me, the right mental attitude toward any divine promise of God will bring it to pass. That's right. If you can look at the word right. Now, there's many things that maybe I could not bring to pass with my faith, but I would never stand in the way of somebody else who had the faith to bring it to pass. If I couldn't go over drop the walls of Jericho like Joshua did or take a little afternoon walk like Enoch did and go home with him, I would never stand in somebody's way who could do that. But I'm thankful to have faith to believe that it's true. God said so. That makes it true. It's God's eternal word. And our soul rests solemnly upon his word. And faith cannot be based anywhere else. All theology and man-made isms are sinking sands, and faith cannot find its resting place upon the shifting sands of man's theology. It's got to find its solemn resting place on the immovable rock of Almighty God's Word. There's word anchors. God said so. That settles it. That's forever the truth. Now, if he said that he is the same and the world would see him no more, we can't expect then the unbeliever to ever witness it or know it. Then if he said, ye shall see me, for I'll be with you to the end of the world, even in you, then we know that God's got a remnant somewhere who's going to see him. Because he promised it. Now, notice. What would we look for tonight if we thought Christ was in Saskatoon tonight? What kind of a person would we look for? Would we look for a person who was a great, swell educator? No, sir. Would we look for a person in some great high cathedral or synagogue? No, sir. If he's the same, he wouldn't be there. He would be rejected there just like he was if he is the same. Would we look for a person who spoke great, with a great education, with a great scholarship? Certainly not, if he's the same. That's where the translators get mixed up in the Bible. They try to translate it with some great high word of the Hebrew when it was just spoken regular street language. The common people heard him gladly. They didn't understand it. Like the word, the English that we call English. Of all my travels, I never needed an interpreter any worse in all my life than I did in England. That's why I needed it worse. I could not understand that to save me. Way down the little cockney type, you know, way down in their throat here. I just couldn't, I just had to give it up. I couldn't, couldn't talk at all. They said, what part of Texas are you from? <laughs> when the, they hear that talk that I have. And I called at Miami, Florida, to New York City to pray for a man over on the telephone. And the little operator at Miami couldn't understand that little Yankee, and neither could the little Yankee understand that rebel. And they had to go through St. Louis and get somebody to interpret for them. 
right in the United States. You see, it's the difference. Language varies. And so Jesus spoke the common language. And that's what he would speak tonight so the common people would hear him. Notice, then we would look for a person of that type. Now remember, Christ is promised to be in you. Now let's see what he did in his life. See what his ministry was. And if we can see that same thing repeat, then we know that he's still alive. Now let's notice him what he did. Now be careful because I'm going to give some trapping questions here. If he was here tonight standing in this arena and you'd come to him as a sick man, could he heal you? No, sir. He could not heal you, for he has already did that. If you are a sinner, could he save you tonight? If you were in the arena and he was here with you, could he save you? No, sir. He's already did that. See? Healing and salvation is a finished work that was finished at Calvary. The price was paid at Calvary. Those powers to forgive sins or to heal sick people does not lay in any individual. They are faith in a finished plan that God laid down from the foundation of the world. So if people says, I got healing power, you know that's wrong. If you go to a man to confess your sins, that's wrong. You go to God to confess your sins. And you go to God to believe for your healing. Now, man do have gifts, that's true. Some pastors, teachers, evangelists, and prophets, and so forth. We have five different gifts that God has ordained to the, to the church, the body. And through those gifts, God's work. Now, let's see what he did. Let's follow his ministry just a few moments. We find him the first thing after John had baptized him, the Holy Spirit coming from heaven and descending upon him and remaining in him. John said, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining, he is the one that will baptize with the Holy Ghost. And now notice, we find immediately after his temptation, he went straight to the Father's business. What was the business? Preaching the gospel and healing the sick. At any day, any age, I realize that I'm talking to smart men and men who are theologians. And I, but I will ask you this, my brother. Did you ever read in history or in the Bible or anywhere where there ever was a revival among the people except there was miracles and signs? Nowhere where God comes, the supernatural comes with God, for He is supernatural. And anywhere, and I'll ask you one more question. Take it from the scripture, wherever you wish it from history. Did you ever in any time see God take an organization or denomination and send a revival by it? No, sir. The founders, after they were dead, the revival was over. Certainly God and man of God who has believed God has stood alone in convictions with God. It's truly. Never did he have a, a revival in an organization. I'm not condemning organizations. They're fine. But I'm just trying to say that you can't revive any organization. It takes God to come down and to do that. And God works through individuals, not through groups, but through individuals. Now, notice closely now. We find him at the Father's business. I'm going to give two or three little statements before closing and start praying for the sick. Now watch this. The first thing we find him, let's turn to the grand old book of St. John, just 
uh, where I have been reading from tonight. In the first chapter of St. John, we find he was choosing his disciples. And we find that there was one chosen by the name of Philip. And Philip, after he got converted, was all enthused. And any man, when he finds Jesus and gets saved, there is a enthusiasm. Oh, I wish I could get that to many great men like Jack Schuler and Billy Graham and those great evangelists whose gods are using. The, the people who profess to come are too starchy. They seem to just say, well, yes, I believe. And that is an intellectual conception. But that won't work. You've got to be born again. And when you're born, there's an enthusiasm rises to that birth and sets the soul afire and takes all the differences away in the isms and comes straight to Calvary and recognizes Christ with a burning love and zeal for the lost and fallen world. When a man's converted, his eyes are set towards Calvary. If he's just a little bit nervous, if you don't watch him, he'll go over on the fanatic side. If he's just a little scholarly, he'll go over on the starchy side. But right in the middle of the road is a sane, sensible, born-again, spirit-led, endowed church of the living God going straight down the road to Christ. That's the real coming from both the sides. One one, one way and one went the other shows fanaticism or either scholarly and too stiff to bow. They know more about the Word than they know about the author. To know the Word's not life, but to know Him is life. To know Him. You don't have to be a scholar. You have to be a submitted person. And when you submit yourself to Christ, Christ is obligated to fill that vacancy that you pour out on the altar to Him. He's obligated to His Word to do it. And He will not fail you. And when Philip was converted, immediately he could not rest till he found his friend. And while I was in the audience, they pointed out to me that it was some 30 miles where he went around the mountain to find Nathaniel, his friend, a very good orthodox believer. And many of you readers know that when he found Nathaniel, Nathaniel was under a tree praying. And Philip said to him, Oh, come see who we have found. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And then the man raising to his feet, Nathaniel, he said, Could there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? And I think that he gave him the best answer that I know could be given to mankind. He said, come and see. Don't stay over here under the tree and criticize it, but come see for yourself. Is our church cooperating? That doesn't matter. Come see for yourself. And as they went along the sides of the mountains, coming around to where Jesus was praying for the sick, I watch him. And when Nathaniel came up in the line with Philip, Jesus looked out to see him, 
Never before had he ever laid eyes upon him. But he said, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. It astonished the man so. You know, I kindly believe Philip kindly warned him about it before he got there. Said, Now, if he happens to call you out, well, don't you say nothing because he'll do it all. I don't believe it. Well, come find out. But go with an honest heart. He said, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. And it astonished him so until he said, Rabbi, whence knowest thou me? If we had time to break that down, when did you know me? I've never seen you and I'm way older than you. And when did you ever see me to know that I was a just and honest and upright man? How did you know I was a Jew? I could have been a Greek or something else. How did you know I was an Israelite? Jesus said unto him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the tree, I saw you. That was Jesus yesterday. If he is the same yesterday, and he's the same today that he was yesterday, he's duty bound to his word. That's right. Then the orthodox standing around the church members, they said, this man is Beelzebub. For he's the chief of the fortune tellers. That's what Beelzebub was, the chief of the devils. They thought it was a telepathy of some sort. And Jesus said, you speak that word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven you. But when the Holy Ghost is come and you speak a word against his work, it will never be forgiven you. Neither in this world or the world that is to come. Did you get that, church? It shall never be forgiven thee, a word against it. Do you interpret it? When the Holy Ghost is come and shall do the same things, there was an excuse then. Because Jesus had not been glorified, neither had the blood been shed. But after the blood had been shed and sin was paid for, man was left without an excuse. God once winked at the ignorance of man, but in this day has called all men to repent. One word against it is unpardonable. It will never be forgiven you in this world, neither in the world to come. The sin against the Holy Spirit. What is sin? What is the initial initiative of sin? What is sin? You say smoking, drinking. No, sir. Committing adultery, stealing, lying. Gambling, murder, that's not sin. That's the attributes of unbelief. For he that believeth not is condemned already. There's only two faculties unbelief or faith. And because they believe not, they do these things. But a man that's a believer doesn't do them because he's a new creature in Christ. All right. We won't have time to get into much more of the scripture. But do you understand what Jesus was yesterday? Did he claim to be a healer? No, sir. What did he claim? He claimed that he was here on a mission. How many believe that's the scripture say Amen. 
He was here on a mission to do the will of God in his age. And he did it. And he said, It is not me that doeth the works. It's my Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Then if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, it has to come by supernatural. Do you see it? When he met the woman who touched his garments a little few days after that, she walked up in the audience and she touched his garments, saying in her heart, If I can only touch him, I believe he's a holy man. If I can touch him, I'll be made well of my plague. Many years she suffered and the physicians couldn't heal her. But she said within her heart, If I can touch him. And when she touched him, Everybody was swarming him. He was going on his road to raise a dead girl back to life. And the little woman touched him. And Jesus turned and said, Who touched me? Now anyone knows the Palestinian garment hangs loose. And it also has an underneath garment. Because as they walk, that dust picks up under the robe. And they have an underneath garment from the knee up, which is tight. And this woman through that loose hanging garment, much looser than my coat, she just touched the bar of it. And everybody crowding around him to shake hands and everything, how would he know it? But he was for, or endowed with the power God was in him. And when the little woman's faith recorded and touched him. What did he do? He turned and said, Who touched me? Everyone denied it. She did too. But he looked till he found her and he said, Thy faith has saved thee. That was Jesus yesterday. If he's the same today, he can do the same today. Now, you minister and brother, might say, Brother Branham, the scripture for that, absolutely, the New Testament, the book of Hebrews said, He is a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmity. And the way he answered yesterday, by the feeling of her infirmities, he can answer the same today if he is the same today. And how dare us to dispute with God's Word and say that He is not the same. He is the same. Now, closing on this thought, so we can pray for the sick. What's any more essential in Canada tonight or in the United States or either I can say the world than a meeting that where Jesus Christ would be present to vindicate his resurrection to the people. The whole world ought to have ears turned to hear. For you see, my friend, that we're at the end of the road. You don't have to be a scholar or a scientist, or neither do you be a prophet to know that the end is at hand. Your own and our own beloved nation of yesterday in England bursted its first hydrogen explosive. And today they made the announcement that there was no more satellite to the United States. They could handle their own affairs. And they can do it. Did you hear our beloved president's talk the other night? When he asked for that great budget to be given, said we must make the aggressor know that we're standing on the sideline, that if he starts anything, he'll be annihilated also. Do you see it just takes one set off? And it's over. 
And can you look through Saskatoon? Could you look the world through the magazines? Snap on your radio and listen to the ungodly stuff that comes through radio and television? Nothing but a conglomeration of sin under disguisement when people who set up a jig dances all night on Saturday night half drunk preach the gospel on Sunday morning? And all the old dirty boogie woogie rock and rolls and then try to class those people Christians. No wonder the prophet said the time comes when the tables are full of vomit. We're at the end and the judgments of God is at hand. When this entire world can be annihilated Two or three minutes. That's right. Sinner friend, think of that tonight. And get it way down in the soul. And I pray that our blessed Heavenly Father, the Lord Jesus, will come tonight to this little group. And if there be a sinner here, that you'll repent of your sins, my friend. For you'll hear the gospel the last time, one of these days or nights, and this might be it. We don't know just what. The great ships are out in the seas with their missiles headed towards each other, just waiting for that strike-off. The Jews are congregating out in Israel, Ishmael and Isaac at one another's throat. Everything the scripture said to be fulfilled is now at hand. The gospel has been preached. Oh, yes, Christ has vindicated. The Gentile days is finished. We're washing up right now. Look at Billy Graham last night expecting nearly 100,000 people at his first meeting and turned out with 18,000. Of course, that was a marvelous crowd. Look at the thing, how it's cooling off everywhere. Look at the church. Look how it's cooled off since ten years ago here in Saskatoon when I was here before. The enthusiasm, the thing has died down. The people's read old true story magazines and stuff and listen to Arthur Godfrey and Elvis Presley until they become so dead with sin. That's right. That's just the way it is the world over. Sin has entered in and captured the world. But our blessed Lord Jesus stands with outstretched arms to forgive the repented sinner tonight, if you'll only believe. Will you do it while we pray? With our heads bowed, please. And while our heads are bowed, would you here tonight who doesn't know Christ in the new birth, maybe you've joined church, maybe you've tried, but really you've never become a Christian, would you just like to raise up your hand and say, Brother Branham, remember me, even before the meeting starts, pray for me. I want to really be right with God when my hour comes to leave. Would you just so much as raise your hand and say, remember me. God bless you. God bless you, sister. And you, sister. Up in the balcony here, would someone raise your hand and say, just remember me, Brother Branham, as you pray. The Lord bless you, and God bless you over here, sir. You here, God bless you over here. Balcony over on the right, I see your hand there also. All right, now just take it to the Lord. I see your hand, sir, on the outside of the left-hand line. The Lord bless you. Now let us pray. Our dear, loving Savior, as we see the age growing dim, the lights of civilization going out, the hour has arrived. It won't be too long now until we'll see you coming the second time, the corporal body, the visible Lord Jesus. Oh, how the tribes of the earth will moan at that time. But if they haven't accepted you, then it'll be too late. Going by all of those who sell, and while they were gone, they were in outer darkness, and they were weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth that great tribulation period. And I pray, Father, that you will bless tonight and encourage the old saints along the road. 
those who are way-fearing men and women who have fought a many hard battle, we pray that you'll encourage them. And the sinner tonight may become ashamed of his or herself and repent and remember, Father, those who raise their hands just now. I pray that you will bless them, Father, and take away every sin and iniquity from their life. And may this be the hour as they have raised up their hands that in their heart they'll say that one eternal yes and really mean it and believe it. In the very moment they believe, they shall be saved. Thou hast said so. We might cry at an altar all night. We might walk forward and fast. But until we believe, Thou hast said so solemnly in thy word, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting eternal life and shall never come to the judgment but's passed from death to life. Believed on God's only begotten Son. I pray, Father, that will be the state of each one who raised their hands and many of those who did not, maybe they might have needed to. Now I have spoken at length of thee. I pray now that you will come to your poor, unprofitable servant and will vindicate these words that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you are present now, omnipresent present always, to manifest your love and to fulfill your word that wherever two or more are gathered in my name, I'll be in their midst. The things that I do shall you also Grant that that will be manifested tonight, Lord, not because we need it, but because that thy word has promised it. It's your promise. When you came, you didn't have need to heal the sick, but you did it that it might fulfill the word of God. And tonight, many say, oh, we don't need those things. But it's to fulfill, for you said you were the same. And I pray that you'll manifest your love and power tonight as I submit myself to you and this church, in Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> now the crucial moment has arrived. And we won't take long. It's 8.30. And uh, by your regular time, uh, your daylight time, that'll make it... We should be away by 9 o'clock in the next 15, 20 minutes. But now, much time could have been put on that word, which we'll get to it much more later. But tonight, I would like to ask you this. If our blessed Savior will come to this platform and perform the very same works and things that he did when he was here on earth, Will you solemnly promise to believe and do all you can to support his cause and praying and getting in the lost and as long as you live? If you do, would you raise your hand so we can just find favor with him, if you will? God bless you. That's very fine. Now, no matter what church you're with, that has nothing to do with it. If you're Presbyterian, Baptist, Covenant, Lutheran, Pentecostal, Nazarene, Pilgrim, Holiness, that doesn't matter. Just so you are a Christian, born again, accepted by God. Now, tonight I'm going to pray for the sick. If God will permit in the regular procedure, for I wanted to go on this part of the scripture to give you a background that we're not here to try to introduce things that's not in the Scripture. If you catch me at any time preaching anything or any practice that's not in thus saith the Lord, you'll do me a favor to notify me. Yes, sir, because I, have, I am 48 years old in April the 6th. Now, I have saw vision since I was just a little baby boy. And not one time has any ever failed. Just a few days ago, there was a man who has been lived next door to me, a Jehovah Witness. His little boy had been crippled up. 
And he brought him to a meeting, and the Holy Spirit called him way in the back of the meeting, twice the distance of this year, and told him who he was and where he come from, told him he was healed. Thus saith the Lord. Watch the Spirit now. We're taking tape recordings. Watch what the Spirit saith. Brother Bram can say most anything, but the Holy Spirit's always the truth, and he'll stay with the Word. And you put it down, see if it's right. It's, Thus saith the Lord. See? Now, and the man didn't know what to do. And finally he said to the little boy, Stand up, David. And the little boy stood up perfectly normal and well. Today, he, I said, Which leg was that, David? He said, Mama, which one was it I was crippled in? Infantile paralysis drawn up. And oh, the thousands of those things that's happened. But anyhow, his brother came in the other day, strictly Jehovah Witness. And if there be Jehovah Witness here, I'm not speaking again you, not at all. But he had been told that was of the devil. And then when his brother came down, I just happened to be in the room. His, the father of David had moved over and bought a little place next door to me. And so he works in the meetings lots with me now and selling books. He was a contractor, very good, noted contractor, but he just quit his work to go in the work of the Lord. And he just travels around like that. And as soon as we got in front of the brother, the Holy Spirit began to tell him his evil thing that he was doing, said, you're married to a woman who's a tall, blonde-headed woman. You've got two children by and you broke up a man's home to get that woman. And now you're breaking up another man's home, a red-headed woman. You're living with her in adultery. He just almost fainted, took his breath. Nobody in the world knew that but him and the woman. He said, who told you that? I said, Almighty God. He said, I now surrender my life to Almighty God, and it's the truth, Mr. Branham. There you are. He went and got his old daddy. His daddy come down. He was a reader, whatever it is, and a head, well, a big man in the Jehovah Witness. And he came down and said, well, he said, I'm telling you. He said, I want to go fishing with you in the morning. I never met him before. He said, but I tell you, the Jehovah Witness say that you're a false prophet. I said, well, they got their right to say whatever they want to. And I said, but I don't know what God says about it. So when we started down the road, I saw a vision. I said, now, Mr. Wood, I've got, thus saith the Lord. So what do you mean? I said, every stream of water we pass over this 160 miles to this place is going to be muddy. But when we come to the stream, to Dale Hollow, where we're going to fish, there that stream will be perfectly blue. And it'll come to pass that I have never caught a catfish in that water yet, but I'm going to catch a whole string of catfish and you're only going to catch one. Mr. Woods is going to catch one. And then I'm going to catch another fish. I didn't see just what it was. It's an outstanding fish, but it'll be a scale fish. That's thus saith the law. He looked over to his boy and we went on. Every stream we passed was just storms that come through, just as muddy as it could be. And we peeped up over the hill to look into Dale Holler just as blue as it could be. We got down there and began to fish for cropping, bluegill, bass, and so forth. Not a one struck. I put on a cat bait and threw out and caught a great big cat just a few moments. I caught two on one line, two hooks. One weighed five pounds, and one weighed three pounds, both on that, and had a whole string. He caught one through that day and that night, and his boy caught a little one about that long. The other boy didn't catch anything. And the next morning I said, there's another fish coming. That'll be the last one we catch. And when I threw in, I caught what we call red belly. I don't know what you call them here. It's a, something or a pan fish, a brim. It almost weighed a pound, one of the biggest i ever seen in my life. And that settled it. We fished all the rest of that day and that night till midnight without even having one strike. I said, now, Mr. Wood, Mr. Russell said that Christ would come in 1914. He set a time which God says no man knows in every hour. But he spiritualized and said he'd come to his spiritual office for 144,000. He came on the day of Pentecost in that office. Now, when he had to give the different prophecies, I said, not a one of them is true. Now, what do you think? He said, if a man can see fish before he catches them, I'll believe that God tells him about it. He said, and there he accepted God. Now, a guy come from Africa was standing up. Well, we won't have time to go into to maybe, but just like that. Now, I can't make it happen. 
God knows that. I do not control it. I have no control of it all. It's Him. Right at the same time He showed a vision like that, I was praying for at least 150 or 200 little crippled children. Sick people. But He does what He wants to. He's God. I can't tell Him what to do. Who can interpret God? God does His own interpreting. We just do as He says do. Now, because He promised me these things, that's the reason I'm standing here tonight before this little audience, and I stood in Africa with hundred and something thousand, five hundred thousand in India and different places, and took the Koran in one hand, the Bible in the other, and challenged every precept there was. Come, let's prove who's God. See, that's it. Now, friends, He's He's. He's either raised from the dead tonight, the same yesterday and forever, or the Bible's wrong and we're in our sins. And if he has raised from the dead and proven himself that he is alive, then he deserves everything that we got. All of our love, all our devotion, all our time, ever what we are. Give it to God. Don't you believe so? And then our religion, I say this, brother. I was entertained in Bombay, India one afternoon by 17 different religions and every one of them denied Jesus Christ. But that night at the meeting before the tens of thousands times thousands, I challenged every one of those religions in Christ's name after a vision come on the platform. I said, now I find out and a blind man received his sight stand on the platform and there's no way of numbering how many. Durban, South Africa, one day making an altar call there after a, a total crippled man on his hands and feet, not even mentally right, was made well. He gave a challenge. I seen 30,000 raw heathens come to Jesus Christ at one time. Recorded them. 30,000 absolute raw heathens. I stood at a Kiwanis club not long ago speaking to... Dr. Davis wanted to ordain me in a Baptist church and said I'd become a holy roller. I said, Dr. Davis, we spent millions of dollars sending missionaries over there. What did I find them doing? Passing out tracts. What we need is the gospel. What you call holy roller and what she said, I lost my mind. One more soul to Christ in five minutes time without one penny of money than all the efforts the Baptist church has made and the rest of them in 150 years. Absolutely, we missed the mark. Jesus didn't say, go into all the world past tracks. He said, preach the gospel. Let's demonstrate the power of the resurrection of Christ. Certainly we have. He never said build churches. I ain't got nothing against it. He never said build schools. He said, preach the gospel. That's what we failed to do. Christ is alive. He is not dead. God bless you now. Billy Paul, how many did you give out? hundred. Hundred, you just about in here. I got a prayer card then. All right, let's begin then. Start. With, we can't line them all up at once, so we we'll just take a little groups at a time, and we'll get as many as we can tonight. But we'll get all of them before the service is over. The week is over, God willing. All right. Who has? Let's start from number one. Who has number one prayer card? What letter is it? G. G, all right. Number one, would you raise your hand, everyone who has it? All right, lady, would you come here? Number two, who has number two, would you raise your hand? Number three, would you raise your hand? All right, over here, lady. Number four, would you raise your hand? All right, lady. Number five, would you raise your hand? All right, lady. Six, seven. Number seven, would you raise your hand? Look, the little boy got a prayer card, sir. Yeah, he hasn't. Uh, I've seen a couple of wheelchairs. Uh, look at those people back there. Maybe they can't even raise their hand. Number seven is missing. Oh, I'm sorry. Number seven. Number eight. Who has eight? Look around your neighbor. Maybe somebody deaf and can't hear. Maybe they can't raise their hand. Do you have eight? Nine? Number nine? Would you raise your... Is that the lady on the... Do you have number nine, do you, lady? All right. Would you come here then? Number nine, number ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. 
15? Who has number 15? Well, well, let's stop then at that then, just for a few minutes. Look around for number 15. Somebody look at your places then. We'll start praying for these. You can find them, put them in a prayer line. All right. Now let us pray just a moment. Now, Father God, this is your service, and we commit all things to thee and looking to thee for thou to help us, O God. Maybe at this little group here, how do I know there's not an evangelist sitting here who will light up this country? How do I know that there's some not little mother here that might call a neighbor tomorrow and say, truly Christ is raised from the dead? It might spare the life of a man or woman there in a hospital dying. I don't know, Father. It might save a soul. It's all yours. I just commit all things to thee. You help me, God, as I submit myself to thee in this audience to speak through my lips and hear through their ears. I ask in Christ's name. Amen. All right. Now, let's see. We have so many. We call for... All right. <clears throat> now, everybody, just be real reverent, if you will, and be seated. Now, look this way just a little bit. How many doesn't have a prayer card and you want Christ to heal you and believe that he'll do it? Let's see your hands go up. All of you that believe now that Christ will heal you don't have a prayer card. Anywhere in the audience. Now, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and uh, can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities, if how would we know that you touched him? How would you know you touched him? Now, if you got the same faith that woman had and touched his garment, can't you look to heaven tonight and touch him? Wouldn't he speak back? He doesn't have any hands but ours. He doesn't have any voice on earth but ours. How many knows that? You mean some of you don't know that? Sure you do. What did he say? I am the vine, ye are the what? Branches. The vine doesn't bear fruit. It energizes the branches. The branches bears fruit. How many knows that? St. John 15, I am the vine, ye are the branches. That makes, see, we lay our hands on the sick. He uses our eyes to see visions. He uses our lips to speak. He uses uh, us to pack the gospel. See, it's given unto his church, and he's in his church manifesting himself, and the people can see him as he works in his church. Now, as I look down this line of people... Are you all strangers to me? Raise up your hand. If, if I don't know you, just raise up your hands all along the line everywhere. All right? How many out there knows that I don't know you? Raise up your hands. You know what? I don't know nothing about you or anything. Just raise up your hand if you will. All right? Now, I don't know a bit more about you than nothing. But there's one thing sure. Christ knows every one of you. Is that right? Amen. He knows every one of you. Then if you look this way and pray and say, God, I believe Jesus Christ. I believe, although I might not understand it. But tonight, I'm going to set my faith to believe it. And I'm going to say, Lord, I'm just going to put this before you. You said, prove me, saith God, if I'll not open the winds of heaven. Now, you be sincere and don't just make believe, but really believe with your heart and say, now, I'm not in the prayer line. You might be in a, a little while, but if you haven't got a prayer card, say, Lord, let him turn around and you use his voice to speak to me. And I'll, I'll believe with all my heart. Would you put that challenge before God and just see what God would do? He'll do it, friends, as certain as I'm standing here, because he promised he would. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. All right, Brother Sofman, if you will. Now, if the pianist, if you will, sister, just real quietly, only believe. Now, just get herself quiet just a little bit. Everyone, just remain in your seat where you are. Keep real quiet and believe with all your heart now. Now just imagine coming from the quarters of glory, coming down where to fulfill his word, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be in their midst. To fulfill this scripture, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'll, I, personal pronoun as I said, will be in their midst. They'll agree and ask anything in my name. I'll do it. Now, I, isn't that wonderful? Now, here is a lady standing here before me, which is a total stranger 
I never seen the woman in my life. She, I, I don't know her. And I guess she doesn't know me, unless it just be through magazines or something. But we don't know one another. If that's right, raise up your hand. We're totally, pardon me. She was in my meeting many years ago. Was that in the States or in Canada? In Winnipeg. Well, that was about 10 years ago, then 11. And, all right. You was probably a very young man. So, so then I don't know the woman, never seen her. Now, the woman may be a Christian. She may not. She may be sick. She may not. She may be up there just to deceive. She may not. I don't know. No more than he would know how Nathaniel said to Philip, or to Philip, uh, Nathaniel said to Christ, Brother, when did you know me, Rabbi? Now, this would settle it. Now, this woman I never saw in my life, and she saw me ten years ago setting out the Winnipeg meeting. If anybody was there, I know what it was. Just packed out the doors and everywhere. But, Brother... Small, I believe it was Frank Small. I believe that might be here tonight for all I know. The brother, I haven't seen him for years. And um, here's our time, first time of meeting on earth. But God knows a woman. Now, if the Lord, here's a perfect scene of St. John, the fourth chapter in your Bible. Read it when you get home. Jesus had need to go up to Samaria. And while he sat down by the well and sent his disciples away, uh, I imagine a a beautiful woman also came out to the well and she was a Samaritan and she went to draw water. She started away and Jesus told her, said, bring me a drink. How many knows that? And what did he do then? He called a conversation with her to pack this conversation. And he said, um, uh, bring me a drink. She said, the well is deep and you have nothing to draw. It's not customary for you Jews to ask Samaritans such. We have no dealings with one another. He said, but if you knew who you were speaking to, you'd ask me for water. And I'd give you water you don't come to draw. What was he doing? He's contacting her spirit. He just seen the woman stand there. So he talked to her. And she said, uh, the well is deep and you have nothing to draw with and on like that. Finally, they got talked about worshiping in the mountain and one at Jerusalem. Jesus told her, after a while, when he found where her trouble was, he said, go get your husband and come here. She said, I don't have any husband. He said, that's right, you got five. And the one you've got now is not your husband. How many knows that's a scripture? Now watch what that Samaritan said. I'm going to tie two scriptures together now. What did Nathaniel say as soon as Jesus told Nathaniel where he was? And he was an honest man. What did he say? Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. How many knows that St. John says that in the first chapter? All right. That's what that Jew thought when he seen that sign done. Jesus seeing him before he come to the meeting. And then when this Samaritan woman come to Jesus... Jesus said to her, talked to her a little bit and told her where her trouble was. And she said, Sir, I perceive that thou art a what? Prophet. We know, we Samaritans, we know that when the Messiah cometh, you believe Jesus was the Messiah? When Messiah cometh, he'll do these things. He'll tell us all things. But she couldn't understand who he was. He said, I'm he that speaks to you. And upon that, she left the water pot and said, Come see a man that told me the things I've done. Isn't this the very Messiah? If that was a sign of Messiah in that day, it's a sign of Messiah today. How many would believe that? Now, here it is. Now, take all your denominational isms out now. Just look at the truth in the Word, if he's raised from the dead. Now, here's a man and woman, both of us, standing here, first time meeting. Now... Just to talk to you, lady, just a second, because you've been the first one here. And now you say, is that my meeting at Winnipeg? Well, that's mighty fine. Uh, that's about ten years ago. The woman is a Christian, exactly, because her spirit is welcome. You're a believer. That's right. Long time. 
And not only that, but you're something to do in a church. You're a preacher's wife. That's exactly right. And you're suffering with, uh, it's in the breast, the tumor in the breast. It's correct. And you're not from this city, New York from Winnipeg. I see the West Coast in a big city, where's the big park? Around Vancouver. That's where it is. That's exactly right. Now, is that the truth? You believe Jesus heals you now? Almighty God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bless this woman and ask for her healing in Christ's name. God bless you now, sister. Don't die. Go on your road and rejoice and be happy. Amen. You believe? Now, the only way I know what was said, it's on the recording there. See, I'll pick it up. Whatever was said was the truth. Heart, now be real reverent, just as reverent as you can be. And now, watch this away. Believe with all your heart now. Just look and believe that he's raised from the dead. Now, you say, could he heal me now? He has healed you. Hallelujah. This is a sign that he has already done it. It's Glory. in the past. <laughs> now, the Lord knows that whether it's true or not. Now, the Bible speaks it to be true. Now, you look this way and just start believing, saying, Lord, I now believe with all my heart. Now, is it, you're the ne next man. I'm or, the husband of that woman. I like to that it's all true. You're the husband of the woman. That's right. And you can vouch her that it's the truth. Yes, I'm all a pastor at the West Coast in Fort Moody. Yes, sir. people could hear me. Just as you said, and I'm a perfect stranger to you, and you told my wife the truth. Can you hear that? <laughs> All right. Now, my friend, you're here, my brother, and you're for something, too. Now, may the Lord Jesus help me to understand. Now, if it's healing you need, I'd be glad to do it if I could, but I'm not the healer. Christ is the healer who has already done it. And if it's for financial troubles, he has the cattle on a thousand hills. If it's for domestic, whatever it is, he knows and can take care of it. Only I don't know. Uh, you know that. I'm a stranger to you. you, you I'm a stranger. All right. May the Lord have mercy and help me. Yes, I see the woman standing by your side. That's right. She is your wife. And you're here for me to pray for you for something wrong with your shoulder. And that was caused by an uh, accident, a motorcycle. If you had an accident and the shoulder never went back to its place just right till then, it's over now and you can go on your road rejoicing and be with God. Amen. It's over. You believe with all your heart? See how simple it is? Just have faith. Now what is it? I've never seen those people. I had nothing to do with their healing. Christ made them well. I believe the man said something about Moody or Moody Church or something. Moody Church, is that right? Moody Church. Church, all right. The Lord bless. Now, all right. This, this lady can't come up the steps. Oh, this, this lady, lady right? It's the next one. All right, you don't have to come up here, lady. <clears throat> you believe me to be God's servant. You believe Jesus Christ to be the Son of God. If God and us standing many feet apart will reveal to me what's your trouble, I couldn't heal you, but your trouble, that's a, God can do that. If he can reveal it, you'll accept your healing. Will you do that? All right, you look at me then, just a moment. Just believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and I'll be his prophet or his servant. Now, if the audience can still hear my voice. I see the woman going. She's very nervous about something. Her nerves are torn to pieces. I see her going into a room, a little room. It's a bathroom. And there she fell upon her chest. And she bruised her chest about a year ago. And she's never went to a doctor to see about it. She's trusted God. And that is the truth. Is that right, lady? All right, go to your seat and be well then, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you now. Don't doubt no more and go on your road and be well. Amen. You believe with all your heart? I ask you out there in the audience, I challenge your faith to look this way and believe. Just believe that Jesus Christ 
has raised from the dead, and I'm his servant standing here. Not him, I'm just his servant, his witness. All right, lady, we're strangers to each other. I don't know you. Now, something happened in the audience. Somebody believes somewhere. It's a lady sitting looking over another lady's shoulder right here. She suffers with headaches. A little lady, kind of black-headed. She was looking this way, praying. She said, Lord, have him to call me. You've been having headaches, tremendous headaches. That's right. Raise up your hand. Sitting right here. All right. It's over now. You can go on your road and rejoice and be made well in Christ's name. Mm-hmm. The lady sitting behind you kind of raised her hands because she's had arthritis and she's been wanting to be healed of that. That's right, isn't it, lady? That's right. See, you couldn't hide your life if you had to. None of you could. Amen. Oh, I'm happy that he's raised from the dead. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. My lady, you're not here for yourself. It's for your son. And he's mentally, that's right, a mental condition. I see him raging, walking. You believe, do you, sister, that God will heal the boy? Let us pray. Blessed Heavenly Father, we ask that the devil will leave the boy. And may the boy be healed, O eternal blessed Father. We ask it in the name of thy Son, the Lord Jesus, who died these things to be made true. Amen. God bless you, my sister. Go and refine it just the way that you have believed. Now have faith. Don't doubt. Just believe with all your heart. Something taking place just then, and I'll be real reverent. Now, the blessed be the Lord. Let's be, just everyone be reverent, real reverent. Just pray now. How do you do, lady? Is this the next lady in line? I guess we're strangers to one another. I've never seen you. Oh, His blessed presence. How that we don't have to guess anymore. Heaven is real. Christ is real. He's alive tonight. I'll be real reverent. Look and believe. Now, lady, I suppose that this is our first time meeting. We're strangers to each other. I don't know you, never seen you. We were born perhaps miles apart and years apart. We just meet the first time. That's right. But God does know you. If God will reveal to me what you're here for, will you believe him with all your heart? Will the audience do the same thing? With all your hearts? You're here for growth that's on your nose. That's what you want me to pray for. That's right, that growth. Now, that is true. Now, of course, the growth is visible, but that's what the lady wants me to pray for. Now, look, see, it takes the strength from you so much. How many knows what visions does to you? You know what the Bible said. My, it's one made the Lord Jesus say that he got weak, virtue went from him. What do you think a sinner like me would be when it happened. Now, if you just, more I talk to the woman, more would be told. Let's take the lady for a minute. She's an elderly lady. Let's, let's just ask, just talk to her a little bit and see just what the Lord would say. Now, whatever it was, what was it? The growth on your nose. All right? Now, you just look this way and believe with all your heart. Yes, I see it move right back again. Looks like they keep 
coming. There's more than one. No, it, it comes and then goes away. It falls off and then comes back somewhere else. You got one now on your chest. That's right. That's true. You believe the Lord will heal you of it? You're not from this country, from this city. You come from somewhere else. You come from the west coming east. You're from uh, Alberta, Edmonton, Alberta. Your name's Pearl, L-E-N-N-O-X, Lennox, Miss Pearl Lennox from Edmonton. That's right. That's exactly true. Your life could not be it. Now, if you go believe with all your heart, you get well. You believe it? Then go on your road rejoice. And I bless thee, my sister, in Christ's name. Amen. You believe? You believe God can heal heart trouble, make you well? Then just go rejoice and say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for, for healing me the heart trouble. All right. All right. Can't hardly get up at morning, can you? <laughs> if you believe with all your heart, thing will leave you. Go away and be made well. You believe with all your heart? I or go rejoice and be made well in Christ's name. The Bible said, if thou canst believe. Now, be real, Reverend. Don't move, you see. Just a moment. And I'll, I'll go. If you just sit still, just a moment. See, everybody's a spirit. And when you move, that interrupts. You say, Brother Branham, is that psychology? If it is Christ used it, he put everybody out of the house to heal Jairus' daughter let a man outside the city, out of the crowd. How many knows that to be so? And be real reverent. If you'll sit still just, just a moment or two longer, all right. All right. When I mentioned heart trouble a few minutes ago, <laughs> had a funny feeling. You were at the same time. Now, if you go believe with all your heart, you won't have to fool with it no more. Be well. If you believe with all your heart, be made well. All right. Come now, lady. Without an operation, God can take a tumor and make you absolutely well. Do you believe he'll do it? Yes. All right, if you believe it, the tumor will leave you. Will you raise your hands and say, I now accept Christ? In Christ's name, may it be so. Amen. May the Lord grant it. Would you like to eat again like you used to? Get rid of that old peptic condition, ulcer in the stomach and things, make yourself be well. Would you like to? Yes. Uh, you will. You accept Christ as your healer? Then go on your road and be well in Christ's name. Let's say praise the Lord. Insulin's a good thing for diabetes, but a transfusion from Calvary is better. You believe God will give you the transfusion tonight? All right, go on your road and rejoice and be happy. Bless the Lord. Let's say praise the Lord, everybody. Now, just a moment. There's a lady praying. She's dark-headed, wearing glasses. She's sitting right in front of me, right straight for that lady right behind her. If you can believe for that throat condition, Jesus Christ make you well. If you can believe it, God will heal you and make you well. Do you believe it with all your heart? you accept it with all your heart? Do you raise up your hand like this and say, praise the Lord? A little lady with her. That's right. All right. Go and be made well. Let's say praise be to God. Praise. You believe with all your heart, lady? What if I told you he was standing there? Would you believe it? Yeah. Now go on your road and rejoice and be made praise well the Lord, in the name brother. of the Lord Jesus. <clears throat> I'm tired of feelings. <laughs> Late of the evening, getting weak. Speaks one thing. But what was the first thing Christ healed with? TB. Make well. You believe that Christ will make you well and heal you? Come here just a minute. Oh, eternal God, I bless this woman for her healing, and may she be made well through Jesus Christ, God's Son. Amen. God bless you, lady. Have faith now and go believe me. Would you come, lady? You believe with all your heart? You're a great deep thinker, wearier too, always crossing bridges where you get to it like that, and thinking that and studying all the time and planning things that never happen is because you have stomach trouble. And that's right, that's what's your trouble, is stomach trouble. That's right. 
Now go and believe with all your heart and quit studying and thinking the price is done paid and Christ heals you. Go believe it and get well and eat your supper. Feel good. God bless you. Amen. You believe with all your heart? What about you, lady? You believe? The Bible said, if thou canst believe. The young lady sitting back there with a purple hat on, looking this way towards me, <clears throat> way back. You got bare coarse veins, don't you, lady? Mm -hmm. And you also, I see you got pains in your legs, have pains in your legs. Second person sitting in right back there. That's right. You have a rectal trouble, which is piles that cause you trouble. You got teeth, trouble with your teeth also. Stand up, lady, so that the people see who... Right, no, right here she is. Right here. All right, lady. Raise your hand again. Bring, the little lady just raised up. That's where that light's are hanging. Yes, the lady with her hand up. All right. Go home and be made well, if you believe with all your heart. Amen. Respond quickly while he, I'm watching the light. How many ever seen the picture of that light? They've already got more. Have you ever seen it? We've got some here. I guess the boys want to give them out. And it's right out over you right now. If you can just believe. Now you, lady. Are you the last one in the room? All right. You believe with all your heart? I don't know. you never seen you. Christ knows you. You believe it? He'll... If he'll tell me what you're here for, will you believe that it's him speaking through me? Because you know I don't know you. You'll believe it? Will the audience believe with all their heart? Now there's a doctor connected into it. Something about an operation. You had an operation, and the operation hasn't healed up right, and you've been going back to a doctor, and the adhesions is set in some kind of it's adhesions, gross, and he wants to cut them out. That's the truth. Is that right? All right. You believe with all your heart? Then go and may God make you well in Jesus' name. Amen. You believe in? What do you think about sitting there, this man right behind here, an elderly like man sitting there, glasses on? You're suffering with your throat. That's strange, isn't it? Your wife's sitting next to you. That's your wife. If I tell you what's wrong with your wife, will you believe me to be God's prophet? Will you accept your healing? Your wife don't understand what's wrong with her. She, her hands goes numb, gets numb. That's right. It's poor circulation, that's all. Is that right, lady? Raise up your hand if that's right. They won't be numb anymore now. You've believed on the Lord. How many believes with all your heart out there that right now Jesus Christ is in the midst of us? Now lay your hands over on each other. Just put your hands on each other while we pray. With your heads bowed, I want to ask you something. Could you doubt any farther? Yeah, I see a little lady sitting back here. had female trouble sitting here. She believed when she bowed her head. That's good, sister. It's over now. Now, if you just believe, see, he's perfect. He doesn't fail. Now, the resurrected Lord Jesus, that's the same yesterday, today, and forever, is right here in this building right now. He's right where you are. He loves you. He wants to make you well. Now, if you believe with all your heart, God will hear my prayer from right here. Not only hear my prayer, but he'll hear your prayer. Your prayer. Pray one for the other. And as you got your hands on each other, and I know people, you're like myself, you're poor people. You don't have very much of this world's goods. But there's one thing you do have. You have the privilege tonight to have Christ by you. And what I'd rather have that than all the money the world ever did have or ever would have. To know that I'm standing here now in the presence of the Lord Jesus, the Redeemer. And his loving grace has reached out to us. Here he is, standing here tonight, doing the same things that he did when he was here on earth, working through you and through me. Well, if he just worked through me and didn't through you, it would never work. It's your faith that does that. 
You people up here with your prayer cards in the line, you out there without prayer cards, you sitting in the audience, why, well, it's Jesus Christ. It's your faith that's doing it. I don't know you, never seen you. And your healing is already done. You're already healed. Christ heals you back out. The only thing that keeps you from receiving your healing right now is because of unbelief. Let's pray that God will take it away from you now. I'm not praying for your healing. I'm praying for unbelief to leave you so that you will receive it. Let us pray. Blessed Heavenly Father, Thou looks down upon this meeting. You've seen those hands go up a while ago for salvation. And now those eight or ten people that raise their hands now can rejoice because that Jesus has proven to be alive. And just as He's alive, their salvation is perfect by Him. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall never come to the judgment but pass from death unto life. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has everlasting life and I'll raise him up at the last days, saith the Lord Jesus. And here they stand tonight in this audience. The presence of God here, even a little handful of people in this arena, but yet you come from glory to manifest yourself. You come all the way across a stormy ocean one night to heal one maniac over in Gadaria, return back without a revival in that country. Oh God, you will come any time or any place that people will call on you. You went plumb down to the belly of the whale in the bottom of the ocean to deliver Jonah. When he turned himself over and began to pray, you went into the lion's den with Daniel, into the fiery furnace with the Hebrew children. You're in Saskatoon tonight in this meeting. The same Jesus, the fourth man of the fiery furnace, the angel who was with Daniel, the Spirit of God with Jonah, the bed of the whale. You're here tonight. You're looking at these hands as they're laying up on each other. Dear poor Canadian people, Lord, who's harvested and worked and struggled, and many of them stricken and down by the devil. And I ask tonight that the power of Satan will turn them loose. I resent Satan and his achievement. I resent it because he's nothing but a bluff. Christ died at Calvary to liberate us from the things of the world and to heal our sicknesses. And we take that stand tonight by his blessed presence to prove that he's here. And may he let these people go. And from this very hour, may they start mending and getting well, coming back to the meeting, testifying, giving God glory. We ask him to leave in Jesus Christ's name. And may God receive the glory. Amen. Now every person in here, under the sound of my voice, that believes that Jesus Christ makes you well, raise your hand and say, Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Will you stand to your feet then just for a moment? You know that old song, Take the Name of Jesus with you? How many knows that grand old hymn, Take the Name of Jesus with you? Raise your hand. Let's sing it through a couple times, a couple stanzas all together now. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Take it. How many Baptists are here? Raise your hands. It was Baptists. Raise your hands. God bless you. You and you and you. Fine. How many Methodists? Raise your hands. How many Pilgrim Holiness? Raise your hands. Fine. Nazarenes? Raise your hands. That's good. Pentecostals? Raise your hands. Presbyterian? Raise your hands. All right. Now while we sing the second verse, 
at the name of Jesus, bowing, falling, prostrate at his feet. King of kings in heaven will crown him when our journey is complete. Don't leave the building. Turn right around and shake hands with each other now. Come on now. At the name of Jesus, bow. Turn right around now and shake hands. Falling, prostrate at his feet. King of kings in heaven will crown him. Oh, when our journey is complete, precious name, oh, how sweet, oh, Father. wonderful. How many loves the old-fashioned meetings? Let's see your hand. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Sure it is. I see how when that spirit comes on anointing, then when it goes off, it just like a, just like a wave comes on and you're just anointed and then it just goes away the same way. Just get to singing or something and it leaves right away. All right. While we bow our heads, remember tomorrow night at seven o'clock, the fast time that they'll be here to, is that right? To give the prayer cards. Eight o'clock at the, at the fast time, we'll start the service. Tell somebody, get on the phone, tell your pastor, come on out now. While we bow our heads, I'm going to ask my good friend, the Reverend Mr. Rasmussen from Tacoma, Washington, if he'll dismiss us in a word of prayer. God bless you, Brother Rasmussen, while we bow our heads. All right.